What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kevin and you are watching another episode of I Trade Crypto. So guys, we're going to be going over a few things today. I have a couple theories I want to discuss with you guys uh, as to what the market, why the market is behaving the way it is, why we have, we've had such a harsh uh, sell off. First off, I just want to give a huge shout out to all the people who have recently signed up on Patreon. You guys are amazing. Your support is incredible. Be sure to let me know on the Patreon what topics you might want me to discuss in this upcoming month's edition of I Trade Crypto. So let's get right into it, guys. Um, overall, you know, obviously crypto market sold off really harshly. Bitcoin's trading sideways. I think the market is literally in shock. I think everyone's sitting there like, oh my God, what just happened? So two days ago, I released a video about that, that Bitcoin wallet, that Silk Road wallet that had 11, 111,000 Bitcoin. I saw that information come out and I, and I sent it, I, I made a video right away. I needed to tell you guys because I knew something was going to happen. In that video, I was talking about guys, this wallet hasn't done anything since 2014 and it's finally moving its Bitcoin. Guys, I think we should be careful here. Um, so, you know, and I think I was the first crypto YouTube influencer to actually talk about this. I think a lot of the bulls out there, the bullish YouTubers, I think they were scared to mention this, but you know, I brought it to you guys' attention right away. And that's what I hope to do here on this channel for the future as well. But I have a few interesting theories to talk about to you guys today. So let's go ahead and look at the market overall. Obviously, everything's super flat. Uh, not much going on here. Just a lot of sideways trading going on. Not all that much support coming in. But this is not really what I wanted to talk about today. What I wanted to talk about was this right here. This piece of information, this piece of news. Bitcoin falls after Goldman Sachs reportedly drops its crypto trading plan. So Goldman uh, was planning to create its own crypto trading desk and apparently scrapped those plans, said, all right, we're not interested in doing that anymore. And then the prices fell. Um, but you know, so here's my theory, guys. This is what I, this is what I think. So this news right here, go ahead and check it out for yourself. I'm gonna put the links in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. But guys, I wanna talk a little bit about my theory about this. So I think what happened was that Silk Road wallet that I talked about two days ago, um, I think that wallet was uh, the, one of the FBI's wallets. I'm not totally sure about this. It's just my theory. I think the FBI had that wallet. And what happened was, since the FBI is part of the government and Goldman Sachs is, you know, very intertwined with our government, they, they, they're very close. They're in bed with each other. They talk about, you know, they, they plan things together. So I think what happened was Goldman Sachs gave a heads up to the FBI and said, hey, listen, we're not going to do this crypto thing right now. So we know you have all that Bitcoin. Uh, if you want to take that profit, you should probably do it now uh, before this market drops. And I think that's what happened, guys. I think the FBI got a little inside uh, intel from Goldman Sachs. And they basically just advised them to sell. I think they just said, hey guys, we're not doing this crypto thing uh, right now. Uh, and the ETF probably won't get approved. So we think you should, you know, go ahead and sell your crypto and, and you know, take those profits while you have them. Um, and I think that's what, I think that's what happened, guys. I think, I think uh, they got an inside tip and they sold their Bitcoin. Um, and, you know, Goldman Sachs, Wall Street, not currently not interested in Bitcoin. That's just my theory, guys, just a theory, uh, but I think it's a pretty good theory. Um, and, you know, I, I also heard a lot of you guys talking. A lot of you guys were surprised in my uh, live stream yesterday when you guys heard me talking about how I believe that these uh, crypto exchanges are paying off news stations to pump Bitcoin. Uh, I, that's not even really a theory. I think I feel like that can be proved. So overall, guys, the manipulation in the crypto industry is extremely vast and it, 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 it's, it's crazy, guys. There is so much manipulation going on. And as I explained in my live stream yesterday, Tether is not backed by anything. It's, 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 it's fairy dust, guys. It's just, it's not, it's not real. So let me explain this very simply. Tether claims that their money is backed by a couple billion dollars, right? So let me just ask you this. If Tether were to put their money in the market, and let's just say Bitcoin went to zero, all of that Tether would lose its value, right? The exchange value on that Tether would be zero. But what about the money backing it? What would that value be? It would still be $2 billion because that money is not at risk, okay? The money that's backing Tether is not at risk. Keep that in mind, guys. Tether is monopoly money. It's not real. This market has been propped up. And another theory that I have is that these exchanges, these crypto exchanges are in on it. They're in on the Tether scam. And what they're doing, I believe, is they're using their friends at Tether to buy Bitcoin and they send that Bitcoin to an exchange and sell it for actual money. 
And that exchange that received the tether would then send that tether back to those guys to then buy it again, buy some more Bitcoin, send the Bitcoin to another exchange, sell it for cash. That exchange then sends the tether back. And it's just this infinite loop of fake money pumping the market up, pushing the prices up. And that's a huge reason why I am bearish on the market, because I know that this manipulation is taking place, guys. And when you know when you know manipulation like this is taking place, then it's pretty then it's pretty easy to predict. Uh, a lot of these price movements. So that's just my two cents, guys. Just want to make a quick video on my, some of my theories as to why the market is behaving the way it is. So guys, let me explain this real quick. You know, I, I benefited from, from the bull market, right? And I sold in mid-December and I saw that we broke the parabolic trend and that's when I made my first video on this channel. You guys can go down to the first video in January where I say, guys, I think we're in a bubble. Uh, I think that, you know, it's pretty dangerous. There's a speculation market, blah, blah, blah. I said all this stuff in January. One of the biggest lessons that I learned um, in crypto was it, pre it was pretty interesting. So, you know, you know, everybody made money on the bull run, right? Everybody who was involved was a genius and they're, oh yeah, just buy Bitcoin HODL and, and you'll make money, right? So everybody was a genius uh, during the bull market. Um, so, you know, when, when we started topping out, I figured, all right, guys, this is not going up forever. I'm going to take my profits and uh, see, what, see what happens here. And, it, you know, it was the right move. The market started to correct and we started entering this depressive uh, market uh, state. And one of the biggest lessons I learned, guys, was actually from not trading believe it or not. So, you know, I have seven plus experience, uh, seven plus years of experience trading stocks. And, you know, in 2015, I bought a little bit of Bitcoin and then, you know, I bought some Ethereum at $40 and, and just, you know, I benefited from that. But one of the, one of the most valuable lessons I learned was not, was when I wasn't trading. And the reason for that was when, when I thought Bitcoin was starting to top out in mid December, I took my profits, the market kept running. I thought maybe I made a mistake, but you know, what? I'll just sit back. I'll let, I'll see what happens. And then the market corrected. And so since the market corrected, I haven't owned any crypto. Okay. And that is one of, that was one of the most valuable things I ever did. Not owning anything during this bear market was the only reason why I could make these predictions was because I wasn't biased. I didn't care what happened to the market. I didn't own any crypto. So I had no bias towards the market. That's why I could make predictions because I didn't care what happened. I said, guys, I'm just going to look at the charts and do what the charts tell me to do. And uh, I just took a step back. I said, hey, I don't want, I don't want to keep trading. I, I want to take a step back. I want to observe the market from a non-biased point of view. And, th and that's what happened, guys. I, I, didn't, I stopped trading. And by not trading, I was able to view the market from an unbiased point of view. So guys, obviously my predictions haven't been perfect, right? I, I was, you know, when Bitcoin was uh, breaking below $8,500 for the first time after hitting 20,000, I was saying, you know, I think, uh, I think the market might hit $2,500 by summer. And obviously that didn't happen. To be honest, when I made that video, I kind of wanted to create some controversy so that I, I would get more views and more subs and whatnot. Uh, but I mean, at the time, I really did think that it was possible that we hit 2,500 and I, you know, but anyway, I still think we're going to hit $2,500. Um, it's just not going to have, it's just not going to happen when I think it's going to happen, or it just didn't happen when I thought it was going to happen. Uh, but I, that $2,500 price point is still my target price for buying Bitcoin. Um, but yeah, guys, I just want to, I just want to talk a little bit about my theories and a little bit how, a little bit about how not trading is sometimes the best thing you can do. Sometimes the best trade is no trade at all. People who trade all the time are more likely to lose money. If your money is constantly going in and out of the market, you're more likely to lose your money rather than if you make a trade and step back, observe the market from an unbiased view, try to figure out what's going on, then re-enter the market when you're confident in your ideas. So that's just my two cents, uh, guys. That's just what I think. I hope you guys found this interesting. I hope you got value out of it. Again, you can check the uh, links below to see it for yourself, to read these articles. If you thought that was interesting, if you got some value out of that, please hit that subscribe button, that bell button, and that like button. Uh, it would help me out a lot. Leave your comments below. Um, and, uh, you know, look out for those live streams. Make sure you hit that bell button so you're notified when I go live because I am going to be going live a lot more often than I used to. Uh, so, you know, be sure to look out for that and I will see you guys in the next video.